Well, howdy folks, this is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, making another video for you out of Boise, Idaho. This is going to be part two of the Hyundai Accent 1.6 liter cylinder head removal and replacement. We're going to go ahead and start breaking this down today and just see where we're at at the end of the day. Uh, so the first video showed you prepping the new cylinder head for installation. So now it's time to get this cylinder head uninstalled. I've already uninstalled my front exhaust manifold along with the fan that sits in front of the front exhaust manifold. Uh, that allowed me to get the room I needed to get the exhaust manifold out. So now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to worry about setting timing yet. I'll uh, make a different video to show you how to do that. Basically the way I like to work when I work like this is I like to pick a spot and I like to work from left to right or right to left, which actually would be from left to right or right to left. So I do need to get down into this area and whatnot in order to get the cylinder head off. So I'm gonna start in this area. I'm gonna work my way up. I'm gonna get all this removed. And then I'm gonna work my way to the left. I'm gonna start working on getting the um, intake and all that removed, making sure I document and pay attention to everything that I'm doing. And then I'm gonna work my way over here to the front of the engine. And then when I get to this part of the engine, I'm gonna go ahead and work on my timing and all that other stuff. So I'm just gonna kinda work around the engine. On this one, I'm gonna start on the right side over here or the driver's side and just kinda work my way all around it. Start taking things off, documenting everything, making a mental note of what goes where so I can put it all back together. To start off with, we're gonna want 10 millimeter sockets and wrenches. 12 millimeters, 8 millimeters, on up to 15 millimeters. So yeah, to get a good start, you're probably going to want to go ahead and grab you anywhere between an 8 to a 15 millimeter socket and wrench and ratchet and just start turning. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting all this stuff off and I'll show it to you here in just a second. All right, now as you can see, by removing the battery, the air filter housing and all that, I now have full access to get in here and start working on getting my electrical connections removed as well as some of my plumbing my hoses my thermostat housing getting all of this off of this side of the vehicle of the cylinder head and once i've uh, accomplished that then i'll go ahead and start working my way to the back and getting the intake and other things removed so just kind of make a note of where your electrical connectors are and go ahead and start working on getting all that disconnected as well as your coolant hoses and all that other good stuff all right so at this point now that you've got your battery air breather all of your plumbing removed all of your wires and wiring harnesses removed your coil pack you're going to be left with your thermostat thermostat housing you're going to have three 12 millimeter bolts here okay that's going to be your thermostat housing then you're going to have a 12 millimeter bolt here and you're going to have one hidden down underneath this pipe back in here all right so make a note of that you'll have one hidden down underneath this pipe back in here and then once you got those out you can go ahead and pull that and it might be easier just to get to that uh hose right there that goes to part of the intake after you pull it so just that's what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and get that apart all right so now we're going to start looking into getting rid of the upper intake and the fuel rail start by getting all of your electrical connectors disconnected and out of the way. Disconnect your fuel rail at the fuel line here, right here, and then also here and here. Pop your fuel injectors out and then start working on your intake. Um, a note that I'd like to show you, you're not gonna hurt anything if on your accelerator cable you bend the bracket up a little bit so you can get in here with a 10 millimeter wrench or socket and get it disconnected all you got to do is just push it back down when you're ready to reinstall so that's not going to hurt anything all right and just give you an example as you can see i'm just kind of working left to right or i'm sorry right to left and i'm getting all my electrical connections everything disconnected and out of the way so I can go ahead and start turning wrenches and getting this stuff moves. So the first thing I'm going to get out of the way, actually I want to get out of here is the fuel rail. All right. And so now that you're working on the intake, you got all your electrical connections off, all of your plumbing's disconnected. 
you're ready to unbolt it. You're going to have one down here hidden. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then another one down there hidden. You're going to have about seven 12 millimeter bolts. Now, that's still not going to let it come off. Behind the intake, you see where my ratchet is at? You see that bracket? You got two 14 millimeter bolts up top. And then if you go down behind the AC compressor, you'll have two 14 millimeter bolts down there. If you can see them. Okay, so you can go down behind here, see where my hand is. All right, I'm touching those bolts right now. One, two, and then you've got two more up top. You're gonna have to go from this side down underneath there to get those two, and then to get the one on top, you'll have to go from this side. And then to get the other one, as you can see where my ratchet is, you'll have to go in from this side. And then you should be able to pull the intake off. Alrighty then, so now here we are. Okay, and we just kind of followed our pattern and worked here. Now once you get that bracket off of that intake, you are going to have two more hidden bolts on two studs. Go right in underneath that intake with your 12 millimeter socket or wrench. You just kind of got to jimmy your hand back in here a little bit and you'll be able to get right back in there and uh, go ahead and get that intake off. So. We're getting right down to the nitty gritty of it at this point. We've got our exhaust manifold off. In order to get that off smoothly, we had to remove the one of the radiator fans. <clears throat> got our battery, air filter housing, all the plumbing, thermostat, thermostat housing, everything associated with that, along with the fuel rail, the intake system, all of that is now off. Now it's time to start moving towards the front of the engine. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my power steering pump removed out of the way. And then we need to set up with a jack and a block of wood. We need to go ahead and set it up underneath the engine because we're going to need to remove this engine mount so we can get in and get the timing off and get all that set as well. I'll also show you how we're going to go ahead and set top dead center. Part of setting top, top dead center is also going to entitle removing the spark plugs. So go ahead and think about starting with removing your spark plugs and then working your way over here to your power steering pump, getting that out of the way, then start setting yourself up to get your timing cover and all that stuff out of the way. All right, so you're going to use 12, <clears throat> you're gonna use 10, 12, 13, and 14 millimeter sockets. You're gonna get your power steering pump out of the way, set that aside. Set a piece of a block of wood underneath the oil pan or something to keep the engine held up. Go ahead and use 14 millimeter sockets, 17 millimeter sockets and ratchets to get your motor mount out of the way. Get all your belts out of the way. Get your water pump pulley out of the way. That's going to be 10 millimeter sockets. And once you've got all that out of the way, you can go ahead and pull your spark plugs and then set your engine to TDC. Now let's see if I can get you in here to get a picture. Okay. That's what TDC looks like. You're going to line that mark up first. Then you're going to go up here and you're going to make sure that it's lined up. Up here. I don't know if you can see through that hole in there. But that's how that's how you're gonna tell. You can also line it up back there. So that's how you're gonna tell it's set to TDC. Another way to tell is look at your cam lobes. If your cam lobes are facing out, then you know that you're at TDC. So once you've set TDC, go ahead and get a 22 millimeter socket, and you can either use an air ratchet an impact gun, something like that. You're gonna need something pretty heavy or you're gonna have to get creative in order to get that harmonic balancer bolt out of there. Now, once you've done that, you should be able to reach in on this vehicle and just pull that harmonic balancer right off of there, giving you access to the lower timing cover and you can get 
go ahead and get the lower timing cover removed. Once you've got the lower timing cover removed, then you're gonna go ahead and remove your timing belt. And then it'll be time to remove camshafts, camshaft caps, and a cylinder head. So we're almost there. So the next step I'm gonna do is get that lower timing cover off. And I'm also going to get my uh, timing belt off. All right, so at this point, even though this is a 10 minute video <laughs> or longer, I've got about half a day into this. And I go ahead and choose an opt after I get my lower timing cover off to just remove everything that could possibly be in my way. You don't necessarily have to remove the engine mount on the engine side, but for me, it's just easier to get in there and get all that removed. So now we are pretty much down to nothing but a cylinder head and we need to go ahead and get the cam caps and the camshafts removed out of here. I have a few videos on how to do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start in the middle and we're gonna work our way out in a sequence, um, just loosening each one, and then we're gonna make sure that our cam caps stay in order and our camshafts stay together so we can box it all back up and send it back as a core charge. All right, folks, and there you have it. There's the cam caps and the camshafts laid out next to the new ones are the ones that have been refurbished so I'm gonna have to run up to the tool store because my hex heads sockets aren't deep enough to get down inside of that cylinder head So you're going to need an extra long bit to get down inside here. Uh, Harbor Freight has them, Lowe's has them, Craftsman's has them. But as you can see, I've got mine down in here. It's not going to fit. So I'm going to have to go do that. So that's where I'm going to end this video at. And then the part three that I'll go ahead and make will show me removing the cylinder head. We'll check for the burnt valve. We'll do all that other good stuff and go from there. So, all right, folks. Well, this is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me. Thanks for watching my videos and supporting me. If you have any questions, check me out on Patreon.com. I'm pretty good at getting back to, uh, to you on that website over there. Also, check me out on GoFundMe. I've got some cool projects going on there as well. Thanks Once again, thanks for your support. I am signing off.